Hello, and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Um, it's been a couple weeks. Uh, things are really crazy in my life right now, um, which is why it's been a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, just lots of church stuff. It's now Lent, so. Last week I didn't record because um, Tuesday and Wednesday I had to go to church because it's Ash Wednesday on Wednesday. So we had to choir practice on Tuesday and I had to go to Costco on Monday. So like there just wasn't time. <laughs> My running schedule sometimes prevents me from doing things in the morning. So this week, because I don't have midweek mass anymore until the week before Easter, which is amazing. Um, this week I've just been like, I'm gonna run in the afternoons. I don't have to run in the mornings at the beginning of the week. Like I have to run in the morning on Thursday because Nitin and I go for a run on Thursday mornings. That's very important. Um, but like, otherwise I was like, why do I need to run in the morning? I mean, I like running in the mornings because it's refreshing and stuff, but I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna not. Cause I got time in the afternoons. I don't have time in the mornings. I gotta do other stuff. So it's Tuesday morning. <laughs> I almost never do this. It's like 7.30 on Tuesday morning. <laughs> Um, I, I've literally, I don't think I've ever had coffee on Tiny Destiny before. Actually, that's a lie. I probably have, but not for a while. This is a Maryland mug from Starbucks. Nitin loves these mugs. He has one from every place he's ever lived in. Um, he never uses them. I always, I'm like, when are you going to use the mugs? He just has them like on display. And he's like, recently his dad came to visit him to stay for a few days. And he was like, we might have to break into the mugs. He uses so many mugs. <laughs> I don't think they did. But uh, this is like my biggest, hugest coffee mug which apparently is necessary on a Tuesday morning. So yeah, I have been knitting and spinning like most days. I do, I do like make a point to do it. Um, but yeah, some days less than others. And also I feel like I've been like, sometimes like I've been casting on a few things that like ended up not working out um, for one reason or like I didn't want to do it or like it didn't work out. So like, I, I knitted this green sock that was like the same as that green, um, like mohair and 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 regular like sock yarn held double that was like uh my macaron cardi from a few a couple months ago um I still had like a full skein left of the sock yarn mad tosh euro sock and boom slang the dark green and then I had one ball of 25 gram ball of um the mohair left and I was like this is definitely enough for socks and then I knitted one sock and then I weighed the mohair and I was like, oh, never mind. So I have to rip that out, which is upsetting. Or I could just finish the sock and then make another sock that doesn't match. <laughs> or I could get another ball of that green yarn, like mohair yarn, which maybe I'll just do that. Um, I don't know. I got. I might have to order for something from Webs sometime soon anyway. So we will see. Maybe I'll just not rip it out because I hate ripping out wool and mohair. It's like the worst. It's just like so it sticks together. Although with the single ply merino and mohair, it's worse because the single ply like gets all fuzzy. A really smooth like four ply sock yarn, that won't happen because it's super smooth. The plies are, make it really smooth, whereas the single ply makes it a little bit less so. Um, so yeah, but I have been like knitting and spinning um, a little bit. So yeah, I finished my first sock of this. Actually, I'm just gonna grab one of these blockers. So you can see what it looks like. I guess I should talk about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Aldous sweater by Isabel Kramer, um, which is just like a very plain sweater. Um, it has, it's like, a, I mean, it's very like similar to like the vanilla sweater from the Woolly Thistle, but it just has a, it doesn't have a top down raglan construction. It has these kind of like really fast decreases on the body at the shoulders here to kind of widen it. And then it just kind of goes straight down here. There's a fake seam with a purl stitch and then you increase the sleeves, um, which I think kind of is very, it sometimes rides up a little bit, but otherwise I actually think it's very flattering. Um, I knitted this in Ba Ram U Titus. I don't know what the color is. I forget, Monica would know. Um, I Monica got this for me because some years ago, just like for my birthday, she gave, sent me a few skeins of this because she had knitted a sweater in it, like a cardigan, it's gorgeous. She wore it at her wedding rehearsal dinner, I remember. It's like, Monica's like, loves to knit like really fine yarn with like really complicated patterns, like fancy cables and stuff. So she, um, 
she knitted a really beautiful cabled cardigan in this and she liked the yarn and color so much that she just bought some for me. She's like, you need to try this. <laughs> so she did. We did that together a lot. Like for her birthday, which was a week, a bit, about a week ago, I got her this yarn that I knew she'd never heard of before because I used it once in like 2020. I learned about it from this book called Slow Knitting. Let me go get this right on my shelf. Um, where is Slow Knitting? Where is Slow There it is. Slow Knitting. This is actually a really nice book. It's just like a nice reminder to like a journey from sheep to skin to stitch. I think it's a nice reminder of like, this is where your yarn comes from. And um, like they, they profile like yarn companies who are very like, you know, intentional with like where they're sourcing their wool and how they're processing it and stuff. And they have some patterns and they talk about, yeah, like yarn profiles and producers and stuff. And so they talked about this one um, company called Beaver Slide Dry Goods that I'd never heard of. So I looked them up and they're in Montana and they have a mule spun yarn system, spinning system, which I looked up and it's not an actual mule. It's like a type of spinning machine that's very like not used that are very often anymore. I'm sure that somebody watching this like knows a lot about mule spun yarn. That's cool. You should tell us about it in the comments because I don't actually know that much and I don't want to pretend that I do. So um, mule spun yarn, yeah, um, it's, it's cool. And I guess apparently it's 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 awesome. So I got this yarn from Beaver Slide. I actually think I have a full skein. Sorry, I keep popping in and out of the frame. Um, so I knitted a sweater in this. It's like a, it's mostly merino. It's 80% merino and 20% mohair. It's sport weight. Like, I guess it's mule spun. It feels very woolen spun to me, but um, it's so soft. Sorry, the lighting is weird because it's so early in the morning, but if I hold it really close, you can really see the like color. Maybe I should cover my face. There we go. Yeah, I'll focus. It's very heathered. It's really funky. Um, I've completely just forgotten to show you the sock, which is now sitting on the blocker right here. Give me a minute. I'll show you the sock in a second. <laughs> I can't make this episode that short. <laughs> I have to go on some tangents. Okay. <laughs> so we were slide dry goods. Monica said I was going to spin her some yarn for her birthday, but then I just absolutely did not have time. Um, like a sweat. She, she only wants sweater quantities like ever. <laughs> so um, I was like, I can spin you a sweater quite a bit. Not like I was gonna, but then I was like, gotta get John Arbin because she loves the like super variegated, um, you know, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like visual profile of John Arbin, like this very like, you know, there's a lot of colors that go in there and that were in the combed top that end up, you know, all kind of mushed together. So she wanted a really heathered thing. And I had some ideas, but I was like, I'll save that. I'll knit, I'll give her a sweater quantity another time. So I um, got her some yarn from Beaver Slide. It's similar to this, but it's a darker purple with like red and blue flecks. Um, and she was so excited. And I was like, yeah, she's like, what is this? I've never heard of it. We do this thing where when we give each other yarn for our birthdays, it started like kind of recently, but I was like, oh yeah, this is what we're going to do from now on, like a couple years ago. Um, we make the other one sit down and shut their eyes and then we hand them one of the skeins and we have to say, you have to guess what it is. <laughs> and like, I've we never guess like actually what it is, but like, we'll like make guesses based on what it feels like. Oh, it feels wool and spun. It feels like it has more than one ply. It feels like it's this weight. Like, oh, it feels like it might be this breed. And we go for a, like a couple minutes until the other one is like, okay, you can open your eyes now. <laughs> um, so she did that with me. She got me this, a sweater quantity of Brooklyn Tweed Imbue for my birthday and like a dark teal. Again, I'm just like not prepared at all because I had no idea what I was going to talk about. Um, she got was the, the most Monica thing in the world. She got two sweater quantities of imbue because she wanted to play with it, quote unquote, play with it too. And she let me pick which one. And there was like this, and then there was like this like kind of dusky, pinky purple. And I was like, you can have that one. This one's called Terrarium. It's te dark, a dark teal. It's very on brand for me. I love dark teal. It goes with my glasses. I love all teal because it goes with my glasses and most of my wardrobe. So, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, what were we talking about? The, I guess we can go back to the socks now. <laughs> I will link all this stuff in the show notes. I will link Beaver Slide Dry Goods. I will link in Brooklyn Tweed and Bew. I will link Slow Knitting. I will link John Arbin. John Arbin's website, if you're a spinner, you can get comb top from John Arbin. It is very inexpensive compared to the yarn. Or you can get the yarn, which is beautiful and mill spun. Yeah. 
I've used both, both are fabulous. Okay, sock. Finish the first sock. Like I finished my January sock so fast that this one took the entire half, first half of the month. And I was like, dang, I'm gonna be like down to the wire on this. But I'm also working on other stuff. Like in January, I was like really obsessed with working on my socks, which are still right there, sitting on the blockers. I haven't moved them because I haven't needed the blockers for any other socks. So you can't super tell because of the, oh, I guess you can. There's like the sock blockers blue. Um, but yeah, it has this fun pattern, like a lace pattern on the front. Not super complicated, very easy to memorize. And then it has a nice little slip stitch or sorry, heel flap and gusset. And then just plain on the bottom, wedge toe. Very standard sock. This is just marking how many repeats I did before the heel. Eight. Eight and ten almost always if I have an eight round um, lace chart. And number two got started. Not super started, but I have done one lace repeat. So I'm trying to work a little bit more on these. I told myself I had to work on them every day until they were finished. And that did not happen this month. But that's okay. It's busy. I realized that like I set these rules for myself and that they are arbitrary. Like I don't actually have to do them. And it helps if I want to get stuff done for some reason, but like, I really just want to like survive at this point. <laughs> I have a lot going on. It's okay. Sometimes we just have a lot going on and none of it is bad. It's just, you know, busy. That's okay. So that's how I feel right now is like, there are certain balls that are going to get dropped and I try not to drop the most important ones. I remember being in graduate school my first year and I was having a really hard time. With just like a lot of emotional issues that were kind of separate to school, but also somewhat related to school. And I was just exhausted. It was like November of my first year. And this girl I knew from Toronto, um, who was also in the program, lovely, lovely person. I made her a sweater once. Her name is Shelly. Shelly is now a professor. So happy for her. Um, she, she found me in the library and she sat with me because I just kind of had my head on my carol and I was like, oh. And she was like, she was in third year and I was in my first year. And she said, here's the thing. Being in graduate school always feels like you're juggling 10 balls and you've dropped three. And you don't always know which three you've dropped. And I thought that was a very apt metaphor. I really liked that. I thought that made a lot of sense. So I try to go through the rest of my life understanding that sometimes you will, we will drop certain balls and we need to acknowledge that. And we need to apologize for that if it makes other people feel like bad because we have not, you know, been doing what we're supposed to do. Like we have to be accountable basically. So I'm willing to be accountable for the balls that I'm dropping right now. It's just like, it's a lot. You know, I have a job, obviously full-time job and then church music stuff is once in a while feels like also a full-time job, even though it's not, I just like, when you have to drive there multiple days a week, sometimes in a row, it's like, oh, this is a lot. But you know, I, it's one of those things where like, Monica, sometimes Monica says to me, like, oh, is this, can you believe we, we wanted this? <laughs> like, yeah, sometimes I can't. <laughs> it's like, you know, I say, I've said this a lot in the past few like weeks and days, but like 10 years ago, if I could go back and tell my 20 year old self, like, this is where you're gonna be. She would have screamed and cried and thrown up, been like so happy to know that I have like a gig at the one of the most just like wonderful places that I could ever sing and they pay me and I get to do it with my best friend and there's so much music and that's like my favorite thing. Like a lot of people choose gigs because they like they want the intersection of it pays well and I don't have to do a lot of work, which is like makes sense as for humans. But I'm like you want to sing less music? What is wrong with you? And now I have this and I'm like, oh, this is a lot of music. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. So that's okay. I'm a good reader. So it doesn't really like take up a lot of time outside of the driving takes up of, the time other people spend practicing. I've spent driving. <laughs> um, you know, I, I do spend a lot of time driving and I would love to know what do you guys like podcasts that people listen to? What What is entertaining? I want something very entertaining, like serial level entertaining. Like if you've never listened to the first season of Serial, you should because it's about Baltimore and it's about a murder. So if you don't like murder podcasts, then don't listen to it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I need some podcasts that are really entertaining. Um, 
please. Um, I have, I'm not really a podcast person, um, but I do, yeah, anyway, I need some, I need something to keep me entertained to get me excited to get in the car and drive in rush hour to DC. So yeah, socks. Yeah. Socks are, socks are socking slowly. It's a little dog on the sweater. <laughs> oh, I need a lint roller. Although, yeah. Um, the dog hair is like mostly the same shade of value color as the sweater though so it's hard to see there's just like I'm like oh there's more of it huh. <laughs> um yeah so what else am I working on I made this headband I'm gonna talk about this more on the shop cast this Friday I already well I already talked about it but they haven't aired the shop cast I made this just this fair isle headband um on Saturday I was resting after a very long run and did not want to do a whole lot um, because I had church. We had a big uh, you know, even song yesterday or Monday. So I um, I just knitted this um, on Saturday night. I like it. It fits actually quite well. I'm not going to put it on because it's not blocked yet, but also because my hair is, it would get ruined. I just braided my hair and it, it falls out of the braid so fast because it's like really thin. Um, and uh, so I need to keep it that way. But anyway, I really liked this and I decided I was going to knit another one. And so I picked colors. I like on the shop cast, I just pick colors out of my box and I'm like, oh, this one, this one, this one. So I came up with a palette for my next headband, but I'm not going to show it to you because I, I want you to watch the shop cast. Um, it'll be on the Friday shop cast this week um, on the Wooly Thistle. So um, I really enjoyed this though. I've actually just barely one yarn chicken with the gray. I just picked a ball. Like I'm, I am going to show you, this is the background color of the next headband. And it was a, like, not this large. This is Biche Bouche, which is super thin. So there's like plenty of yardage on this. It was just like a Jameson and Smith. It was, I mean, there's a 202 cone, but uh, one of those gray cones up there is a 202, that one in the middle. Um, that's the color that it is. It's just Jameson and Smith 202. But, um, I, um, yeah, I, I, pulled a ball out that I was like, this is definitely enough for a headband. And I literally had like this much left after like the last buy of the cast off row. I didn't think I had enough to do the cast off row. And then I found that I had clipped the long tail cast on and there was a really long amount of tail. And I was like, okay, this is enough. I'll just spit splice this on and then I can finish the cast off edge. But I didn't even need it. I literally barely one yarn chicken. So that was fun. And this is a real mismatch. I just kind of like picked random colors the 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 gray is Jameson Smith 202 jumper weight two ply jumper weight this navy on the edge here is Rama Fennelgarn this like kind of teal is Marie Wallen this orange is I think paprika from Jameson's of Shetland and then the mustard is the Jameson Smith the uh, egg yolk yellow color I can't remember what color that is but yeah I like it there's four colors the next one's gonna have five um plus the background. So that'll be a little bit um, different, but yeah, that's been fun. I really liked it. It took me it just took me a couple of hours and I just was like, yeah, this is relaxing. And I, I actually, it fits really well. The last time I made a headband, I knitted it with the same number of stitches as a hat and it was way too big. Um, so I like folded part of it in and just stitched it down and gave it to my friend Sarah. She loves it. But, um, this one actually fits 144 stitches was the correct number. Cause usually for a hat, I would do 168. Um, around and so this I did 144 and it's about 12 stitches fewer for the ribbing edges and um, yeah I just made up a chart from a chart book found a period that I thought would go well I thought it would be too wide with the periods but I think it would have been too narrow without them so you, I could either do a bigger oxo or like taller oxo and probably wider as a result or I could yeah I don't know do a smaller some smaller periods what it doesn't matter I like it this way so yeah I might make another one exactly the same I might change it I don't know I also made it well I made this a while ago I don't know if I showed it this is just a coffee sleeve um I have actually made a lot of these that I probably haven't shown because I just like knit them and give them to people immediately um I love these I think they're so fun Jordan picked these colors so I'm gonna give it to her um but I just remembered to weave in the ends and block it the other day so it's yeah, it smells good because I use jasmine wool wash. I need to get more of that. Um, Eucalyn jasmine is my favorite. If you don't like strong scents, though, it does have a pretty um, obvious smell. But I like this little goat's horn rose. 
Um, this is, in case you're wondering, and um, it's not clear, this is supposed to go around like a reusable or a non-reusable coffee cup. Um, yeah, I know people who, like, I mean, I've given these people, I know use them just like, they just like bring them to coffee shops and they carry like the regular like paper cup, just, you know, then you just have to remember to take it off before you throw the cup away. <laughs> um, I have, I almost accidentally threw one away, which was pretty funny, but I love these. Um, they're fun. So, and I like to play with colors, um, like Fair Isle colors, like in something like this, it's really just like a little color play. It's fun. I think it's, um, makes a really nice little thing if people like coffee or carry around a like it won't fit I mean you could make one to fit like a larger thing but then like my yeti tumbler that I use sometimes that's really wide already I don't want to put something else on it because it makes my hand already hurt if I carry it around all day so I um I just use put it on the Starbucks like reusable red cups that's always just I've Nitin and I have always gone to Starbucks on the almost always on red cup day to get them um so I have a well, I should have more. I don't know. He has like all of them. He always has more, but um, I have one in my office and I have one at home. Although I'm missing a lid. <laughs> so one in my office doesn't have a lid, but I do like to put this on it because that plastic is really quite thin. And if you put boiling water in it, it makes your hand hurt. This is burning. So anyway, yeah. Anyway. What else is going on? I don't know. I'm spinning. Um, I'm spinning this spin still I can't remember how much of this was done the last time I showed you so the first two bobbins of this traveler shawl spin are done uh this is a Bergschaft top that I dyed like a cranberry and kind of amethyst this is a pole no this is a Rambouillet top from Hello Yarn I think it was called like Fading Light or something it was like the November colorway um and then the you can see those correct, right? Yeah, those are good. So the, and then the last one is um, also a Hello Yarn from October called We've Got Ghosts that is on the bobbin right now on the wheel on Thelma. So this is Merino, it's very soft. Um, of course it is Merino. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying this. This is my last, I yeah, I have spun most days. I don't have a lot of time to spin, so it's definitely slower going, but I don't know if I talked about this on the channel, but like, I just feel like after kind of the first year of spinning, I, I need to do it less to kind of keep the skill up. So I do it more as like, this is really relaxing and I need to just like meditate for 15 minutes and I don't do anything. I just like spin and I wash the wheel. It actually is really kind of soothing. A lot of people have said to me though, like watch me spin, even on the e-spinner that like, it's very hypnotizing. Um, cause well, especially on the real wheel, and I imagine it even more so on the Saxony um, Felicity, which I don't, I don't really use for very much. Something is wrong with her tension. I need to figure it out, and I don't have the brain power to do that right now. You know, when there's like a really small thing, and you're just like, my brain does not have the capacity to deal with that right now. Like this is why I don't let it, let knitting projects sometimes linger um, when I can't. Like I know exactly what needs to have. I actually don't know how to fix Felicity, but like. I'm sure I could figure it out from online because a lot of people have Ashford traditionals, but like things like, oh, I made this mistake in this knitting and I need to rip it back and like redo this, but I just don't have the capacity to do that right now. Yeah, it's like one of those things. So we'll see. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, like not a whole lot else being knitted on. I'm trying to, you'll see the other thing I'm knitting on if you watch the Shopcast on Friday. So I'm going to, be a little secretive about that and then I'll show you more of it next week it's not a secret it just I'm like I just recorded my shopcast segment yesterday and now I'm just like it's like deja vu if I just say the same stuff yeah. again you can watch it on the woolly thistle I don't want to double you know then there's no reason for you to watch that well except all of the other things in the shopcast on the woolly thistle <laughs> but um yeah I don't I don't want to anyway um yeah fun so fun okay oh here's another this is new this is like, I think this is gonna be a lot, my last installment of the Hello Yarn. It's called Paint by Number. It is Targi Bamboo Viscose and Tessa Silk. 80, 10, 10, four ounces. I really like this. I think it's really pretty. Um, it's hard to see on the, in the plastic, so I'll bring it back a little bit. But yeah, this is really fun. I think it's super funky colors. I think mean, it'll look really interesting. Yeah. Um, I. 
uh, was really excited to see Andrea Mowry's new tessellated pattern. Um, she has the tessellated cardigan. I haven't knitted any of those things. She does. She has the, the vest and the and the pullover, which she did for Rhinebeck, and then she did the socks for her November, like Thanksgiving weekend, four day sock challenge, in which I did not participate because I was busy. Oh, that was when I got Felicity, so I was very busy <laughs> spinning on Felicity, <laughs> trying to figure her out and singing and stuff. So, um, but I really like the tessellated cardigan, and I was talking to Maggie about it last week when it dropped, and she was like, gonna knit this Alpenglow. Um, I picked her up some yarn at Rhinebeck that was this, like, really beautiful, like, super deep dark purple, and she was gonna use some, like, hand spun. She had this whole plan, um, but then she saw the tessellated and was like, oh, no, I want it that instead, and so we had this Whole conversation about like what um you know to use for the contrast if she went to use the plum so I brought her a couple of hand spun skeins and I was like here just pick one of these and she picked the there was like a like a green and teal and brown one it was like an archie skein and then there was this other one that was like purples and teal and like blue and that one was like much more I think it was like more subdued and so now she's just working on choosing a color for the Surrey alpaca um Sorry for just like telling everyone about your knitting drama, Maggie. No, it's exciting. I'm sure she was happy to have me put it all over the internet. <laughs> so that'll be fun, I think. Um, I but I really like that that cardigan. I would. I think it's very wearable. Like, I don't. I think I would rather knit the tessellated as like a pullover or a vest, so there was less like back and forth because it's hard you can't really steak mosaic knitting in the same way like I would try to steak mosaic knitting and I think I would fail so I think I will not do that um but but if you have like one gauge in the round and then a different gauge back and forth then it changes a bunch of stuff and it's like annoying so if you do the whole thing basically back and forth except the sleeves and your gauge will be like maybe a little bit more matching I don't know I I don't know it's hard to say, but I like the Tesla cardigan. I think it is very cute. So I'm considering knitting it, but I have so many things to knit. Um, I really gotta get cooking on that Rhinebeck design, I, but I need to go to, I think I need to get my Jameson's of Shetland yarn for that in England before I start knitting it obviously I mean like unless I have like one ball of each of the colors I want to use I think I might need to plan the colors and then know what I'm looking for when I'm at like loop London or something so that I can um have a plan and then and then I can start I didn't start my Rhinebeck this is this one again like something that's within reach that I have to go out of frame for this one I started in March I think of last year so and I had it done for Rhinebeck and it was in timeout a lot. So um, this, I should not have trouble knitting a, I'm going to knit a V-neck pullover fair aisle for Rhinebeck and mostly blues, like white with blue and some grays, I think. And then um, a little bit of orange. So that'll be fun. Funky. I'm excited about that. Yeah. This actually is going to be a short one because I, I mean, it's, only 8 15 but I have to go to work it's a really really busy week so yeah oh a couple of other things I do have a couple of other things okay Paul Clay is done however it bled in the wash which is annoying um and I would like to crowdsource here it just bled a little bit a little bit on the sleeve like has anyone tried to like take this to a dry like something like this to a dry cleaner and did it work like did your stain come out or do you have experience getting the color bleeding out in any other way um, because I didn't set it, so in theory, it, I don't know. My, I don't really understand the chemistry of your dye <laughs> because I don't know what chemicals are in the dyes. That I know that the acid is what sets it, but I don't anyway. So, a big theme of my life, as some people know, is that uh, chemistry seems to follow me around, and I hate chemistry and I don't understand it at all. <laughs> And yeah, it's like present in my life in all these ways. And I'm like, why don't I understand this? And it's like, oh, this is chemistry. It's freaking chemistry. Ugh. Um, so I don't know anything about this and why this is happening. But if anyone does, let me know in the comments if you've had some success taking like something to a dry cleaner that 
got a little bit of dye run off in it and, and it, you know, it came out clean. So otherwise, in theory, I could unravel it and re the body, which I might do. Just, I have lots of that color left. So yeah, I think in the worst case scenario, I would do that because it is top down. So I can just, and then like soak it again and have more dye bleed. No, Monica was like, why did you soak it overnight? And I was like, I don't know. I always do that. She's like, I soak it for like 30 seconds. And I was like, yeah, that would have been a better idea. She's like, there's red in it. So my mistake also I should use cold water and I should have learned my lesson because this has happened before. So the definition of insanity, excuse me. Oh, no, there's coffee all over my sweater. Great. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. It's using a coffee colored sweater to mop up the coffee on my sweater. Okay. Um, yes. And then one other thing I was oh, Monica's weeks ago I was wearing this t-shirt that's green and she was like that is the best color for you ever and she like look, look. she's like your eyes look so you like pop out of your freaking face with that you should knit something in this color and I was this is just a t-shirt from the gap and I was like you know who has this color the wandering flock the wandering flock is like I think Andrea Mowry has used the wandering flock before it's like pretty small they have it at like ritual dyes they have it at like small yarn shops they have it. i think they probably have it looped in dc actually um and i need to go there and see if they have the one that i want so and i saw it in berkeley at i think it's called black squirrel yarns i can't remember if it's twisted squirrel or black squirrel but whatever i was in berkeley with ian like a month ago my brother and i went to this yarn, two yarn stores and i saw this color of yeah the wandering flock they have all sorts of like beautiful pastels and kind of bright neons and they have this color and it's like a glowing, like super light Kelly green, basically. Um, and I was like, that's beautiful. And so I was like, that's the one. And it's in this yarn called Baby Paca, which is like, I guess you could use it for socks because there's nylon. It's like 70% wool, 20% alpaca, maybe it's baby alpaca and then 10% nylon. Um, and it's sport weight. And Monica was like, you need a sweater quantity of that. So I'm going to get a sweater quantity as like a treat yourself. I got my security deposit back from my old apartment, which was like, I mean, I knew that I was going to have that money, but like, I didn't need it because they, my, the management company that managed my old house was so like unprofessional and bad about getting us our security deposit back. Even though we like left the house, we cleaned it and all this stuff. Um, so, uh, that was not great, but we finally got those and I was like, okay, so now I can like, not gonna use the whole security deposit to buy yarn, obviously, but I was like, I think I'm gonna buy some yarn. I think I'm gonna buy some yarn. So that's what I'm gonna buy. And I'm gonna get it, I'll just get it from Ritual Dyes or like Etsy or something, unless they have it, they might have it at Looped or the Black Squirrel Yarns will have it. Um, So I'm excited about that. I think I might just get, like I might get like four skeins, which is like probably more than I need. Probably just need three for a sweater in my size, but um, no, there's hair on my pants. Dog hair, dog hair everywhere. Um. <laughs> okay it's worth it um uh what was I saying oh baby packa right so um yeah I get four and then I can make something like maybe like a cardigan or like I don't know I don't love the idea of making something complicated and cabled with sport weight yarn because it would take like three years at my rate when I have to put everything in time out because I get bored so we'll see we will see um, how that goes. Yeah, 33 minutes. This is super short. I should record before work more often. All right, in the next couple of weeks, I assume I'll be back next week, but I'm not going to promise that because things are just crazy. Um, I will probably have the second sock mostly done. That would be good. I'll have another headband probably. <laughs> if I can find a couple of hours to sit down and knit, knit it. Um, yeah, I'm still working on my Gansey for Mark, but it's just the, like, stockinette, so it's not super fun. There is, again, like I said, there is something else that I'm working on, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. That will have some progress, probably. It is a sweater. The sleeves will probably be separated, so that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. I don't have any hand spin on the needles right now, and I feel guilty about it. 
This is kind of one of my New Year's resolutions. I also haven't updated my blog in like three or four weeks. And I'm like, I was going to do that every week. And I'm like, you know, again, things that aren't actually rules and don't like contribute to my income. And like, they are, they do contribute to my well-being because I love building community on the internet. But like, yeah, I just, <laughs> so sometimes there are things that just kind of fall by the wayside because you have a lot going on <laughs> and that's okay. It's allowed. So I'm just reminding myself, like, you only do this. You are the only person that makes these rules. And, like, I have to do so much stuff this month. I have to renew my car's registration. I have to do my taxes. I have to go get a parking sticker for my parking area. Like, there's a bunch of, like, small things that are just, like, taking up so much room in my brain that I'm like, I need to get these done. So I better go do them. So, yeah, this has been nice, though. I'm glad that I did this, stopped in, had a little chat um, with all of you. Who can't talk back to me except in the comments <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this has been tiny guest getting with emma bye